Welcome to our second episode in our archaeology game. So last time we were using arcade.makecode.com and we started building out our archaeology digging game. So just a quick recap, we ended up having a few blocks on our start where we set up our sprite um, and we made our sprite move with some buttons so I can control him using my keyboard or I can use the simulator's joystick. Um, and we stop at this splash screen which we use to give some instructions to our player. So I can see on my simulator, it's waiting for me to press A. So I'm gonna press A. Um, this next thing that we did was we built a little tile map so that we can effectively have a level that our player can work around in. And the last thing that we did was we had the camera follow him around so that we can see the whole level, we can explore the whole level. So we're gonna carry on from this point. So I'm just gonna reset my game again and click on the A, and you'll notice that our player starts here. He starts underground. Now remember the purpose of our game is to have our player start at the top and dig his way down. So our, we really need an instruction to um, reset our player to start above ground here. So what we're looking for is an instruction um, that can move the position. Now the way we measure positions um, in our game is by using an X and a Y coordinate. So imagine the top left hand corner is X zero and Y zero. So what we need is an instruction that could help us move this sprite um, in those, those dimensions. So I'm gonna click on the sprites category and I'm looking for an instruction here that's gonna help me move the position. So this second instruction here set my sprite position to X and Y. So if I drag that in, my simulator is going to restart. I'm going to click on my A button and we'd expect our player to be moved up into the top left hand corner. And you can kind of see the, just the little end of, of the player just there and as I move him you can kind of see he comes into view. So X and Y zero zero it's a good start, but we can probably move him just across a little bit and down a little bit further. So to move him across, so across is measured on the X axis. So I'm gonna give the X just a little bit. And to move him down, we need to use the Y axis. So I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move that down just a little bit as well. And you can kind of see this, this little tool here um, kind of shows that the, the position in relation to the screen. So if you're not quite familiar with the X and the Y positions, have a bit of a look at the tool that gets generated there. Okay, let's test that out. So I'm gonna restart my game, click on the A button, and now this is looking a lot better. He's gonna be on starting on the ground level just there. So the next thing, now that we've got our player moving around on the screen, we've gotta fill in these blank tiles here. Remember we mentioned that we wanna be able to fill these spots up with some dirt, because the end effect is, that basically our player is gonna be able to dig from the surface down into the underground to be able to find some items. So all of these blank spaces along here, we'd like to be able to fill with dirt. Now I also mentioned in our previous video that I wanted each of these dirt particles to be their own sprite. Um, and the reason why I want them to be sprites is because we later on we've got some instructions that let us detect the overlaps and we can very easily detect the overlaps of sprites. We can't so much detect the overlap with the tiles. So in order to be able to create a sprite in each of these blank locations, we're gonna to need to ask the game engine to tell us where all of the blank locations are on the screen. So what we first need to be able to do though is we need to be able to provide the computer with, um, with a, a location for it to be able to store where all of those blank spaces are. So if we need the computer to remember something, we need to store that in a variable. So a variable is just a bit of memory that we can use to store stuff. So I'm gonna drag in my variables, um, the set, var set variable block, which we've used before. We used that to create a sprite up the top. I'm gonna to give it a different name. That's why we've got the little um, warning sign there because it's telling us that we're trying to set our sprite to um, something. I wanna be able to name it blank tiles. And our warning goes away. I don't want it to be zero. I want it to be a all of the blank locations on the screen. So I know that the, the scene is, is the kind of category where 
uh, all of the instructions are for working on our levels. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for something that might be able to help us out. And if I look down the bottom here, under tiles, the, the category tiles, I can see array of all something locations. I'm going to drag that in. You'll see it's a nice circle block. So the circle blocks go inside the circles. And this is starting to make sense to me now. So if I click this down, this would give us an array of all of the tiles that we've selected and their locations. So I could select any of these particular tiles, but I want the blank ones. So I'm going to leave the blank one um, free for me there. So now what we'll find has happened is the variable blank tiles is going to contain a list of all of the blank locations. All right. So what we've, we've got a, a whole list of all of these locations now. It's time for us to go through and fill up those locations with dirt sprites. So we want to be able to visit every one of those locations. So we kind of want to be able to loop through our list. So I'm looking for an instruction that can help us work through a list. And this is a pretty good candidate down the bottom here. It says for each element, um, we've got a, a value of some item of our list. So let's drag that over. And we know that our list or our array is called blank tiles, not list. So I should be able to select blank tiles just here. So now what's going to happen inside of this, this loop here is value is going to become the location of each of the locations that we've already found from this instruction. Okay, So if there are 100 um, blank locations or blank tiles, this loop is going to run 100 times. And every time, this value is going to be the current value of our blank location. So the first time it runs around, it'll be the instruction that's going to, or the, the, the location up in the top left. And then it'll keep moving along and give us all of those locations. So what we can do here is inside of this loop now, we can create a new sprite. Let's drag in a new sprite, just like we did at the top here. Let's give it a nice meaningful name again. I'm going to give it a new variable name and I'm going to call it dirt because this is going to be our dirt sprite. Um, this time, we can click on a picture just like we did last time. So I'm going to click on the editor and I'm going to try and use my artistic skills this time to draw um, a dirt particle. Whoops. Change that over. I want to have maybe just a few little bits of, I guess, aggregate or different types of rock type in our, in our dirt, a few different types of colors. Remember, it's very pixelated. That's the whole purpose of this retro kind of gaming style. So I'm just trying to add some color effects and see what that might look like. So that kind of looks pretty dirty to me. OK. So let's read our instruction through. Set dirt to sprite the sprite that we've, we've drawn our picture of, of kind of player. So I didn't mention this when we first dragged our um, original sprite creation in, but we can give our, our sprites a, a particular type. It's kind of like a category. So if you're a player, that makes sense. That, that category is, is the sprite that you're going to control. But let's have a look. We've got other categories here. So projectiles. Uh, so if we were shooting something, we could give it a kind of um, projectile. Um, food and enemies or a new kind. Well, for us, I'm going to say that maybe our um, dirt is going to be kind of like food for our archaeologist that's going to be digging through the ground. So I'm just going to set that up to food. But the whole purpose is that later on when we detect some collisions, we want to be able to detect the collisions between two kinds of sprites. So it's important that we set those, um, those categories up. Okay. So we've set our dirt sprite to a new sprite. That's not going to do anything just yet because we've just got one location and it's just dropped it in there. So essentially, what we need to do now is set the location of our sprite, our newly created dirt sprite. Um, fortunately, we know how to do that because we've done that just up the top here. We're going to do it a little bit differently though this time. We're still going to use the set position block and we're going to use that as our next instruction here. We don't want to set my sprite up because our sprite is our player. We want to set our dirt sprite. And we don't want to set it to the X and the Y position. We actually want to set it to the position that it was found. So we want to kind of replace those transparent tiles 
with our dirt sprite here. So we need to find the x and the y location of value. So let's have a look. We've got we've got a block here, a nice circle block. My sprite in the x location. So let's drag my sprite and the x, and we'll grab another one of the same block and put it into the y, and we'll change the y over. So we've got all of these properties here. So at the moment it says set the dirt position to x and the x position of my sprite and y to the y position of my sprite. Now my sprite is our character. What we want is the x and the y position of value because remember this is going to step through each of those blank locations. So if I change that to, to be value, now change that to be value, let's run it and see what happens. And bang, I can see that all of my blank locations have been filled with dirt. And even better, my player gets hidden behind the dirt. But I can see a problem here. I can see a problem. If we have a look at our tile map, we've left all of these transparent squares at the top. So um, we're going to have to fill them in so that they also get hidden. So I'm just going to add blacks, some black backfill for my top layer. Now let's test it again. And bang, looking good now. So we've got a whole entire area have been filled with dirt sprites that our player is going to be able to collide with and we're going to be able to make um, hidden as they move through. So the next step is to make our sprite come along and as he touches the dirt particles, um, we want those dirt particles to disappear. And, and we want to make it look like he's digging through those dirt particles. So I think I gave it away before, but we're looking for those instructions, a set of instructions that can work when our two sprites overlap each other. So let's come up to sprites and have a look. If I scroll on down for the overlaps section, we can see this hat block, this block that doesn't connect to any other blocks, says, on sprite of kind player overlapping with another sp another sprite of kind player. That sort of sounds like what we're going for. So I'm going to just drag that over to the side. Um, and that's going to sit off on its own just there. Okay, so we know we've got a kind of player. That's our sprite. And we've got another kind here. And we've set it up to be food. So I want when my player overlaps a piece of food, I want some instructions to be to be run. Okay. The instructions that I'm looking for here are something that can remove our sprite off the screen. So I'll go into my sprites category and I'm going to scroll down. I'm looking for something that might be used for removing a sprite off the screen. So this destroy my sprite looks promising. Let's drag that over and connect it up. Now we don't want to destroy my sprite because my, my sprite is my player. I don't want to destroy my player when he touches some dirt. I do want to destroy this other sprite. So this is the dirt sprite that we touch. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag it into my destroy block. Notice how it highlights yellow and it'll go straight in there. Um, I can get rid of the leftover block that got kicked out. And now I can test. So let's see what happens here. As my player comes down, I can see that my dirt sprites are disappearing. That's just what I like. If I expand that destroy block out, you'll see that I've got some effects here. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a really cool disintegrate effect. So let's change that up. Let's make it so that it only dis disintegrates for 100 milliseconds. So well, it was set to 500 milliseconds, which is one second. But I'm going to change it to one fifth of that. So as my player comes along, yeah, that's better. So when he hits the dirt, the dirt disintegrates into these dirt-like particles, and it's looking pretty good. Excellent. All right. So I think that might be a good place to um, end today's episode. Um, so what we did today, just to recap, we reset the position of our sprite when the game starts, and then we tried to fill in all of the blank locations um, that we left from our tile set with dirt particles or dirt sprites. To do that, 
we ask the game to give us all of the locations of our blank tiles. And then we used a loop to go over each of those locations. So we visited each location that was blank and we created a new sprite and we set its X and Y position to that blank location. When we created that sprite, we set it up to be a kind of food. So we put it in a category of food. And that gave us the ability to be able to use this other overlapping block that says when our player and our food both overlap, we can use a destroy block with a nice cool effect. Um, and in effect, we've got um, a digging capability with our, with our um, sprite now. We'll see you next time.